Welcome to this edition of Great Books, a lively discussion of a selection from the canon of exceptional literature. Here's your host, Jack Hatfield. Welcome. Thanks for joining us for the Great Books Show. I'm Jack Hatfield. Our panel meets periodically to discuss great works of classic and modern literature. The selection being discussed today is How Religion May Be an Embodiment of Reason by George Santayana. It's chapter one in the third volume of his larger work, The Life of Reason, published in five books from 1905 to 1906. George Santayana was a philosopher, essayist, poet, and novelist. He was born in Spain in 1863 and died in 1952. Santayana was raised and educated in the United States from the age of eight and identified himself as American. He taught at Harvard where some of his students became famous in their own right, including T.S. Eliot, Robert Frost, Gertrude Stein, Walter Lippmann, and W.E.B. Du Bois. Other of his contemporaries heavily influenced by him include Wallace Stevens, Conrad Aiken, Supreme Court Justice Felix Frankfurter, and Bertrand Russell. He is considered one of the foremost proponents of philosophical naturalism, which is the idea that only natural, not supernatural, or spiritualism forces and laws operate in the world. We shall see if this plays out in our selection today. Calling himself an atheist, he still held a friendly view of religion. He spent the last decade of his life in a Catholic convent in Rome where he was cared for by the sisters. This selection, to use his own words, addresses the question, what relation then does this great business of the soul, which we call religion, bear to the life of reason? The first question would be uh, around the title, how religion may be an embodiment of reason. Uh, the word may be, the words may be, kind of interest me. When is it not an embodiment of reason? Well, according reason? to him, it, it's, it's part of reason. Reason includes religion, and he spends this whole paper telling us how and what how religion, uh, reason is more basic than religion. Well, he says it differs, too. Well, yeah, that's his mistake. Okay. <laughs> he says that they both... I, I had a little trouble with the, whole use, with the whole idea of reason because I wasn't sure going through this whole thing exactly what he meant by reason. And, and the, the term life of reason sounded like a term of art. I mean, it sounded like something he probably defined earlier. So I wasn't sure whether I was getting it, but it seems to me that at least one way was that they both aim at the same uh, goal, which is a kind of a comprehensive... Um, way of order, reasoning, reason is an ordering principle. So they both aim at the same goal, which is to order one's life and one's thinking. Values. And, and values. Values. But the difference is, so in that sense, it might be an embodiment of reason, or at least it aims toward the same, toward the same goal. Where it differs and where it's the may, I think, is if it's taken literally. Mm -hmm. If it's taken to actually be true the tenets of, of religion are actually taken to be true, then it ceases to be, or it diverges at that point what from if being a body. It's not part of the imagination, isn't re doesn't he say religion comes from your intuition and, and your mm -hmm. imagination yeah, he, he and, contrasts and reason, reason and uh, comes from your rational part. Right. And and so both of them that's seeking where truth, wrong. but what kind of truth? Scientific proof? Well, no, well, he doesn't well, get What does he mean well, by truth? That's that's that was my yes, point. Yeah, yeah that's the other answer issue. your question, yeah. would it be when religion isn't imaginative? No. I, he, no. 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 He, he's, he's saying, <clears throat> well, one thing he's kind of interesting, I think, he's saying what reason does is to take reality and interpret it. Mm -hmm. And what he's saying, religion adds something to it, adds something that's not found in our senses or in nature. And he says, there where imagination takes, can run amok, and all of a sudden you can go off and do all sorts of things. Well, can you say that religion is more emotive in its function than strictly intellectual? Well, he strips feeling away from the intelligence and the two are intermingled, and that's why Correct, I think he's right. screwed up. But well, you know, he, says, he says the problem with uh, religion is, you know, it'll use poetry and that's true, or, you know, but it goes too far mm -hmm. and makes it too literal. But my question is, what is, is anything literal in his view? 
of things. Science, science is not literal either. No, I think, I think him, I'm not sure. I it's think it's just closer to being a one-to-one -one correspondence than poetry. So one of the things that I caught on this in the third paragraph, where he's describing um, <clears throat> things that are taken literally, to my mind, in training, mythology precedes religion, and. What I'm reading here is he's talking about mythology is a step stone to religion, and religion is a step stone to rationality. Well, so there's a thrust toward evolution yeah, okay. in this. Yeah, very much so. But he means, right. but he thinks of mind as evolving out of the natural forces. Correct. You know, so in a sense, everything's epiphenomenal. But isn't he saying <laughs> that religion came first? But no. No, it's no. just an influence. You had reason too. Both of them evolve out of this natural order of sense sensuousness or whatever it is our first original impression of reality and he clearly doesn't i mean the 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 framework of a chronology you know mythology mm -hmm. uh, then religion then reason suggests that what came before is superseded by what comes after and he mm -hmm. clearly doesn't think that he doesn't think that reason is that religion is superseded by by reason no nor does he no. think it serves it's, a different it's, function it's, no, well, they're, they're no. both, I think they're both oriented to. He's for the, the is same wrong function. when it oversteps itself, he, um, when it becomes right. too literal and tries to cram its ideas down other people's throats. It's and the section that is under, it aims at the life of reason. Just very <laughs> close. What page number is it? Uh, I've got different. I've got this. Would be my third page. If you page. got the life, the life of reason is singularly abortive. Well, um, it's that paragraph starts. Yet the difference in tone and language which is in that section. Right. Okay. Toward the end of that, oh, or yeah. about, about two-thirds of the way down, he says, um, the struggling and changing force of religion seems to direct men toward, eter toward something eternal. And then it seems to me that the next sentence is at least one way of thinking about the function of religion. It seems to make for an ultimate harmony within the soul and for an ultimate harmony between the soul and all that the soul depends upon, mm -hmm. which is also what the life <coughs> of reason is trying right. to do as well. Um, but uh, the difference between religion and reason on the one hand, society, science, and art on the other, is that they're much more narrow. They focus right. only on one aspect of life and on one aspect of what needs to be harmonized. And religion and reason harmonize. So Har the end is reason is going to get you to the promised land the way religion mm -hmm. is. He, he says religion is going to get you to the promised land, doesn't he? He promises that. But that, that, that that's, that's, he would say that that's... But that's not true. Yeah, he yeah. would say that that's, why, not, yeah. that, that, that's, that that's that's where religion goes awry yeah. right. in terms of its usefulness is when people start taking it literally. But why is that the case? We are, well, you you could, right. The end of that paragraph you just read. Says. Well, we're saying, he says, reason, on the other hand, is a mere principle or potential order. Yes, And right. that's all it is. Well, yeah, but he also says religion, this is the end of the paragraph Joe just read, religions bring some order into life by weighing it with new materials. Reason adds to the natural materials only the perfect order which it introduces into them. That's what yeah, I was saying. saying. Oh, okay, okay. so, reason, so reason, reason is substantive. Uh, religion no. is substantive. Yes. Religion brings things in. Reason is just an ordering principle. Whatever's yes, there, it's going to, to order. To it, it religion interprets and one adds. And one adds, oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, that's what okay. that seems right. Yeah. right. And yeah. there's another thing. It says, uh, the function of religion and reason um, coincide. This function is performed, oh, excuse me, um, uh, is common to both is that of emancipating man from his personal limitations, limitations. Mm -hmm. which yeah. I, which is true. So, but then he goes on. Um, but what are those limitations? The function of religion that of reason coincide. This function is performed in the two cases by very different organs, very different reasons. Um, so, organs. Well, <coughs> where, where are you, Jay? I same. Well, it's forty four percent through. Okay. Does it state through. that religion makes a better person out of people because of the values right. that they shoot for in order to get the ticket into the promised land? No, I didn't say that. It might I, I think he sort of religion. does I think he sort of does uh, isn't he saying that? Partly. Well, I think yeah. he sort of does when he says um, that, that people who basically cannot really pursue the life of reason, whatever that means, and I'm really not sure entirely what it means, because he capitalizes it, it makes, again, it makes me think like it's a, it's a term of art. He's defined that mm -hmm. somewhere yeah. earlier. Um, so everything we say about, everything I say about it feels tentative. But it seems to me like what he was saying is the people who cannot pursue the life of reason can get the same ordering in their life through religion. 
But then he says that there's some real drawbacks. So he says, right, right, yeah. Yeah. right. Those, yeah. Uh, makes it too little. Uh, imagined, right. uh, imaginary remedies for mortal ills, right. some of which are incurable, essentially, while others might have been readily cured by well-directed um, effort. Or effort. Right. Mm -hmm. To confuse intelligent and to locate sentiment by gratuitous fictions is a short-sighted way of pursuing happiness. And then he says, nature is soon avenged. So he's saying right. that. Same one. He's, he's saying imagination can come up with all sorts of fairy tales, and mm -hmm. it doesn't work in the right. end. So and, if you and, go and, too far and try to make it too literal, otherwise it could be symbolically true. Right. Well, and that's what he says here. Yeah. The only truth of religion comes from its interpretator of life its symbolic rendering of that moral experience which springs out of and which it seeks to elucidate. So, I mean, I sure. think he's very heavily into religion as metaphor here. Mm, yeah. yeah, he likes it. He says right. religion is built on poetry, but religion can carry poetry too far, and he almost treats it like it's the opium of the masses. Well, it's, it can I, be. I, You're a psychologist, you tell us. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when Marx, when Marx, when Marx made that comment, he wasn't putting religion down. What he was saying was, what yeah, he was no. saying was that the, uh, the, the, you know, the, the workers' lives were so miserable that they need something to. And these to guys are contemporary. <clears throat> um, on the at the bottom of uh, the paragraph that is headed, or the section that's headed, um, it has, has that exact ambivalence that you were talking about, Jack. What when its poetic method is denied, its value is jeopardized. That section. Mm -hmm. um, page, Joe. Uh, let's see. Page. It would be I mine. It would be one, two, three, four. It would be my page four. Approach to imagine four. it. Okay. It's it. Yeah, when its poetic method right. is denied. Right. That's, yeah. the, that's the, yeah. the summary of the section. It says um, the last two sentences basically get the ambivalence. Religion remains an imaginative achievement, a symbolic representation of moral reality, which may have a most important function in vitalizing the mind and in transmitting, by way of parables, the lessons of experience. But it becomes, at the same time, a continuous incidental mm -hmm. deception. And this deception, in proportion as it is strenuously denied to be such, can work indefinite harm in the world and in the conscience. Then he goes on to say, but that's not so bad anyway, because religion isn't doing anything worse than the, you know, the situations <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't be better if religion weren't there. He sort of takes it back a little bit, but he says, uh, it should not be conceived as having taken the place of anything better, but rather as having come to relieve situations which, which but for its presence, would have been infinitely worse. Mm -hmm. So it's he, a little bit of anime. Yeah, but well, he says, we should thank religion for the sensibility, the reverence, mm -hmm. the speculative insight which it has introduced into the world. But then he goes on and says, it is merely symbolic and thoroughly human. Right. So there's no so supernatural right. aspect to religion, in his view. Right. So is this an existential approach to what he's trying to say here? You know, I was a little bit as you define as you could define that. But you know, the thing that gets me is he's talking about imagination. How can you have a scientific theory without imagination? You just have to make it. It's got to be more of a one-to-one -one correspondence. But no scientific theories are absolutely true either, as far as we know. He's talking it's about just fiction. much more. He has a no scientific. Well, he's talking about truth. No scientific theory is true. It's Absolutely true. It can never be conclusively hundred. It's 100 never true. It's only as good as the first refutation of it. Until the next Newton comes along, or Einstein, right. or yeah, whoever. Right. So one of the questions I had in reading this: Does this argument stand up if you take the soul out of it? I don't think. Where's the soul at? He's always, of he's always feeling of reverence. He's always yeah, referring to the soul That's, in here. So if you he does mention the soul does more he? than once, quite he does? a few times. Really? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. He's got it in here all Must the time. Have well, quote one. Okay, uh, when its poetic method is denied, its value is jeopardized, and he states here: this spurious satisfaction is naturally the problems. And uh, excuse me, this spurious satisfaction is naturally. Uh, a prelude to many a disappointment, and the soul has infinite trouble to emerge again from the artificial remains an imaginative achievement. And he mentions so, it more. He mentioned it more. I've got oh, it yeah, it's about five or six times. Yeah. Now. I don't think so. he means soul as in a. Well, yeah, well, no, he doesn't mean a supernatural no, aspect of ourselves. He means He's a centering spirit. experience. Right, right. Of right. each person. Yeah. And how do you take that away? 
That's a good well, way of seeing it. The center of religion is, is, is an integral part of all, the soul is a part of all religions in most cases. But he's not using it something called a soul. No, yeah, he sort of does. He just says it's got to be higher. I thought it was more of a metaphor for that, which is just more most central yeah. to a person's, I want to say spiritual, but, but, but to a person's. We didn't have death. What? That's a good question. What do we want? Would we have religion if we didn't have death? Yes, because we still have suffering. And that's Pardon me? We still have suffering. Huh? That's a good point. Well, That'll bring religion on. Well, we also <laughs> always are searching, too. Yeah. I mean, we have to figure out where we're going to go in life. And whatever we call it, we develop an ideology or religion or goal or something. And that is what we live for. Yeah. It, are we just live day to day? Uh, well, yeah, at the, but at the first, that. he has an interesting take on atheist. Mm -hmm. Oh, that? yeah, that's well, that he, line which is, about which is, language. Yeah. Yeah. But well, he is an atheist, according yeah. to his biography, anyway. Yeah. And yet the nuns ended up, I, the right, nuns ended right, up taking right, care right. of him. Or maybe so he was Martin taking care of them. He himself an atheistic Catholic, didn't he? Didn't yes, he an atheistic Catholic, yeah. 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 Um, he says that atheists are just lazy, and they, if they really got into it, they would probably, he doesn't say it this way, would probably form another kind of religion. Right. Yeah, I see, yeah, they right. don't I examine the original right. experience. They don't, right. they don't stay with it long enough. It. Right. Well, they're, they're engaging it, they're engaging it at Frank, the level. Frank right. Bacon, uh, right. with that quote, uh, the ones who do a little philosophy uh, end up as atheists. The ones that really get into philosophy end up as believers. But then he goes further. And well, says, not necessarily believers. Right. But but at least they go down. Well, it's not the they, God. It's, they come it's up with the a God. philosophy. They come up with a philosophy. Yeah. It's not the God that uh, Bacon was alluding to. Right. That, yeah. That no, was, no. That was he says much yeah. better idea of God if you do that. What was that quote about language, uh, where? Oh, how, depends on where you were born and your no, religion. That's, your, uh, our religion is accidental, which, by the right, way, so, 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 so is your language. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, like, just, like your language. Where right. you were born yeah. determines your language, your yeah. religion, your culture, all of that. Well, has well religion is a it's historical. And <laughs> 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 Wait, you mean, if you had been born in Denmark, <laughs> I'd be tall. <laughs> but, he, but he throws in an interesting thing. He says that uh, uh, it's just like to. We have to have a language, I mean, to live. Right, you have to have some language. And right. so he's yeah. saying... You've got to have religion. you got to have religion. Well, and it can about. change, but you've got to have some life experience, so you've got some reason to change it, too. Right. I think it was Wittgenstein said the problem with philosophy is language. Yeah, well, the problem with everything is language, isn't it? It is. We can't even agree. <laughs> we can agree to disagree. On page two, it says, the attempt to speak without speaking any particular <laughs> language is not more hopeless than the attempt to have a religion that shall be no religion. No particular. A in right. particular. Yeah. yeah, just kind of a generic religion, whatever that is. Do you think that premise is correct? I, I, because I saw language as a tool and religion as a belief. Uh, where, I'm sorry, uh, where, where was that, Bob? What section was that? Uh, page two. Oh, all religion is positive in particular, yeah, right? Uh, the second paragraph. It's under all religion is positive in particular. Yeah, but he thinks of religion as, first of all, an influence, which, it, which mm -hmm. leads to poetry and art and literature that is then expressed using whatever language you choose to use to express it. And yeah. he says it better than, than art or science. Mm -hmm. It is better, society. yes. They can't do it. But as well, until it becomes too literal, then they try to tell everybody what to do. I th I, my, my take on that was that he was saying you can't. There is no such thing as generic religion, right. whereas there is generic right. because because the life from, because reason right. is has no content. It's just an ordering principle and has no content. It can be universal. He does think it's universal. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, he says. That. But but religion can't be. There's no such thing as generic religion. And I, I love this line. He says, um, <laughs> I'll do a line. Uh, yet a moment's probing of the consent. What he's, what he's talking about is people who, who change from one religion to another. Yeah, right. and, then he's saying, and then he says that um, uh, if, you, if you actually look at what they're, what they're believing, it says a moment's probing of the con conceptions surviving in such minds, emptied, uh, will show them to be nothing but vestiges of old beliefs 
creases which thought, even if emptied of all dogmatic tenets, has not been able to smooth away at the first unfolding. What a line. I mean, that's yeah, I, mean, I, I, such I, a I, I mean, such a way. I love you know that that reminded me of? We did a study on Hume, on the individual, and he said that all memories are fleeting. There is no core person. It's constantly right. changing. And that's what I read in there when I saw that. That's the first thing that came to my mind. Well, I don't think he believes that. Hume's that definition no, of individual. He no believes core. in a kind of an evolutionary process yeah. to life. We start out as a wilderness and we try to tame the wilderness. But that's not in here. The course of our yeah. yeah, he says it down here somewhere. Let me well, ask I didn't use the word wilderness. The, uh, I made that up just then. Here's one toward the end. It says, religions will thus be better or worse, never true or false. I love most other things in life. What do you think he means by that? Repeat it, Jack. Religions will be thus, will thus be better or worse, never true or false. So religion won't be true or false. Right, because he, he thinks that, that, I mean, the sentence before that is, each doctrine will simply mm -hmm. represent the moral mm -hmm. plane on which they live who have devised or adopted right. it. Mm -hmm. I presume he's, he's, he's a, someone who's uh, like a wig, you know. I mean, he thinks things will get better and better, <laughs> essentially. And and as and as we do evolve, maybe through science. In fact, I had a sense that that's kind of what he thought would uh, would spur the the evolution. But as we evolve, we'll also evolve morally, and the religions that will come out of that will then be better, not truer, because there's not anything for it to correspond to. There's yeah, no. Well, there is religion. some evolutionary hierarchy. Since religion is man-made, as opposed right. to mm -hmm. supernatural, right. then man gets a better understanding of of life, and he comes up with a, with a religion. different, better religion. Yeah, yeah. Right. But he doesn't yeah. believe in an inevitable progress. I don't. Think. You don't think so? No, he doesn't say here. He doesn't. I, I, yeah. no, I said I assume. Well, he but says I might be good wrong. or bad. Now, what does he mean right. by good or bad? That's a pragmatic judgment. Well, about what is good what or he, bad? One of his arguments here, under the aims of life of reason, the life of reason is the seat of all ultimate values. The life of reason is an ideal to which everything in the world should be subordinated. It establishes lines of moral cleavage everywhere and makes right eternally different from wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I had a little trouble with that line because on the one hand he talks about it as not being, as being a process and not, or a principle and not being substantive. And I can't see how you get from a principle to something yeah. that makes and right he, and wrong. Well, he calls yeah, it that's a, the weakness. He, he calls it a container. Mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to religion, which is different religions fill in oh, underneath the container of, of reason. And he goes on oh. to say, religion does the same thing. It makes absolute moral decisions. It sanctions, unifies, and transforms ethics. Religion thus exercises a function of the life of reason. Right. That's And that's part of why I was confused because again if, if, if religion is if reason is merely an ordering principle and has no content and that and yet at the same time religion does the same thing as reason it makes absolute moral decisions mm -hmm. it, that that sounds like that sounds like content mm -hmm. which makes me think either I don't understand that sense or I don't understand what he really means by reason that's I well religion leads to that but I don't think I think the judgment is existential. What you decide to. I mean, the two no, religion does. I mean, religion does. Yes, yeah. but it, it also he says religion does the same thing. So I'm assuming that this next sentence where he says what religion does is also what reason does, and that's the part I couldn't. Right, but the two are working together. And if I read this properly, he's saying that the seat of all ultimate values is the life of reason, not religion. It's the life life of reason gives you your ultimate values. Now, religion may have contributed to it, but reason is where you arrive at it without the burden of religion. Yeah, but and he also says uh, reason is one, religions are many, right? right. Which it was right. Right. the universe. That's that's yeah. why I thought yeah. it might be. Yeah. So you thought don't it was think universal. you can do away with religion? Do you think? No, I don't think no. it does. No. No. And because religion is a feeling, it's more Correct. an influence. It's emotive. Whereas and religion is includes is included in reason. Yeah, I think it's that, a higher form. Right? I think that right that that as long as there as long as people have this thing within them that needs to, that needs to be expressed and unified, it's religion is going to be present in one form or another. Yeah. But he also, I think he says, so his religion is rationalism is what I'm most. Yeah, I, yeah, I was thinking that that maybe part of what he's maybe we can understand this in terms of what it is he's arguing against, and because and because of some of the comments he made about atheists earlier 
and, and other times. It seems to me that what he's arguing against is the person who thinks that because religion is not scientific, it's a nonsense and can be done away with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it can be banished from, and in fact, it's a, it's a baneful influence. It should be banished from uh, human life. But I he think doesn't that, think that. No, no he clearly talk. doesn't think that, right. and I think, and I think and that that's it. what, exactly. yeah, and I think that that's what part of what. But he points to where it can go wrong. Right. Because mm -hmm. he says someplace in there, it has all these nice aims, religion. Right. Right. But and then he gives a short, but it largely yeah. fails right. to attain it. It right. fails to yeah. attain it, yes. Yeah. Right. Well, we kind of get to our, close to the end. Do you want to, any comments or something else? There's, he's just full of great quotes, I think, but. Uh, um, I thought it was a very difficult read. Uh, I had to read it several times. Uh, I think I said that earlier, it was more studying it than it was reading it. Yeah. Well, there's a lot in here about perception, theory of perception. Mm -hmm. You know, his natural instinct is not much disturbed in the human brain by what may happen in that thin superstratum of ideas which commonly overlays it. I didn't understand that line. Did, did, did you, can you explain that one to me? Yeah, it, it means that most of our experience is epiphenomenal. We're controlled mm -hmm. by the natural order. We evolve within the given natural order. We're pretty much carried along by it, but we adjust to what's outside of us. That's what I took it to mean. Evolution. And how does yeah. that? Yeah, well, he believed in evolution. Yeah, very much so. Of sorts. Yeah. You know, my, my problem with it is uh, the uh, classic philosophers believed in reason above anything else. Mm -hmm. What seems to be in neuroscience nowadays is they're getting reason has a very, very small role in mm -hmm. what we do. And it's, it's the emotion and what we've learned and all that. And our conscious mind is just kind of, you know, goes along for the ride at times. Mm -hmm. And it's completely different. So they, what, what no, they, that's what he believes. Neurosciences would say now is that morality and all that is not found, found in reason. It's found in So it's a subconscious? Based on what Jack's saying, is a subconscious that much a part of a reason? Freud, Freud had um, <clears throat> had a metaphor of, um, of the the mind as, although he was using it as the id, mm -hmm. and and which is mostly un, which is unconscious, and the ego, which mm -hmm. is partly unconscious, partly conscious. His metaphor was the ego is a rider on a horse that he can barely control, and that's kind of running away. Well, so I mean, this is an old, this is an old, horse, a horse that he can barely control, control. and that's <laughs> and in that and in that book, uh, what was it? The um, Jonathan Haidt had one, and he says it was about an elephant. Yeah, the yes, elephant, this got, yeah. enormous elephant. Yes. is is the unconscious, and this little tiny jockey that thinks he's controlling it is the unconscious <laughs> mind. The mind. But huh? but yeah. and all that's true, but. Um, both from my work and also just thinking about it. I mean, the, the neuroscientists who come to that conclusion have reached that conclusion by reason. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the show. Join us next time as we discuss another great selection. As Aristotle said, the best way to learn is to get together in small groups and discuss great ideas.